unfortunately, we need it all in lowercase anyway. Can you capture the flag? Clearly I can't. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. It's super rainy outside, so if it gets really loud, it's not my fault. If you're new here, my name is Ash, I'm 27, I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast, and on this channel we go over Try Hack Me walkthroughs and other CTF events, while we go on our professional way to be a cybersecurity expert. On today's video, we are going over another Try Hack Me capture the flag. This is indeed called capture the flag. For my room notes, for this and other rooms and most of the commands that I use, see the hack notes in the description below. And down there, you can also find timestamps and other links mentioned in this video. Okay, let's go. All right, so we've got try hack me open and we've got capture the flag. Now we can read this, but this is called elite speak. So you may have come across this, but 1337 is also elite. And this has become sort of like a meme or a, if you know, you'll see 1337 all around as you learn cybersecurity and hacking. Cool, so this is a beginner level challenge. So scrolling down, we have four tasks currently, and it seems that they are in four different areas or subjects. So let's start off with translation and shifting. So we've got translate or shift and decode the following. Answers are all case sensitive. So as the title was in lead speak, we can also look at this one. So we can go ahead and basically just type this out, but just in case that the string was longer, how can we scale this up? So let's go ahead and copy this and we can go over to decode.fr and there's elite speak 1337 and we can paste in there and we can decrypt our message. So we can see it on the side here, can you capture the flag? Now there's a couple of areas like the Q and the question mark that have been changed. So it's not perfect. And unfortunately it doesn't give me an easy way just to copy and paste that. That's kind of annoying. It's probably not the best tool, but I mean, at least it can give us a nudge that we're going in the right direction. And unfortunately we need it all in lowercase anyway. Can you capture the flag? Clearly I can't. So putting back the capitalized letters, I guess there might've been a different one in there, uh, but we got there. <laughs> uh, okay, next up, we've got a series of zeros and ones. So if you've done your studying, this will look like binary, which is in base two numeral systems. So in base two, you've either got a zero or a one, and it is just a series of zeros and ones. So let's give that a copy and go over to CyberChef. And we can go ahead in the left here and search up what we want to use to make up our recipe. So in this case, we're gonna be going from binary and we can paste it in on the right hand side as input. This is going from binary to our output, which is let's try some binary and we can paste that in. Next up, we've got another string here, which looks like just absolute rubbish. And we have an indicator of what this is by the equal signs. So if we're unsure, we can go back to CyberChef and we can paste it in here. Under the favorites, there is a magic and it's going to try and detect what it is. So we can see here from base 32. So we can go ahead and click that. That'll load in base 32 and we've got the correct answer there. Base 32 is super common in CTFs. So if if you're interested, base32 uses a set of 32 digits and is represented in five bits. And if there isn't enough in the last bit to make up the full bit, it'll just add those equal signs. It'll just like buff it out. So if we paste that in and we look at our next one, this is gonna look almost identical. It's a little bit longer, but we still have these equal signs. So if you've done any other CTFs, this might look super familiar. So we can paste that in and we'll do our magic and it's already suggesting base64. So we can give that a click and we've got our answer. So the same thing at the end there with those equal signs. So it's similar to base 32, but 24 bits. So that's four, six bits. And you can see here a chart, which we have our index to the binary and then what character that would represent. So let's copy our answer and paste that into the capture flag. Next up, we've just got a series of almost numbers. We've got a few letters in there too. Now this could just be decimal or this could be something else. So if we're under sure we'll uh see if we can get a suggestion from cyberchef hex with a space so we'll click that and the answer is hexadecimal or base 16. so hexadecimal also known as base 16 just commonly hex represents numbers using the base 16. so unlike the decimal system that we're used to the 16 distinct symbols hence base 16 0 to 9 represents 0 to 9 and a to f 
So this is something that you can see in different programs like Wireshark, where packets are being sent across. You can get the breakdown of hex or even in Burp Suite and other programs. So this is definitely something that comes up. Uh, also, IPv6 is written in hexadecimal. And I thought Mac addresses were too. Great. So we can paste that in and we'll move on to the next challenge. Now, the hint in here, and this is the only reason I got this one, is that it says 13. So we'll paste it into CyberChef and we can see if we can get a suggestion. And this time we don't have anything. It's not picking anything up. But a commonly used simple cipher is called rot13, rot13, which rotates the characters by 13 characters. And we can see here, rotate me 13 places. The next one is super confusing. So we can try CyberChef again to see if there is a magic. But looking at our list, there's actually another rotating, a more complex variation of the Caesar cipher includes ASCII characters 33 to 126. And the default is rotating 47. So we can go ahead and get rid of 13. And we can just leave our rote 47 in here. And we can see you spin me right around, baby, right around 47 times. Nice. So we're making our way through. Next up, this is definitely something that I've never had to use. Um, but if you don't recognize this straight away, definitely Morse code. And the indication is that, um, like we see that machine there, did it, did it, did it, did it, like that was it. That's Morse code. That's as, that's as much as I know about Morse code. But again, we can go from Morse code and we can see here, telecommunication encoding. Ooh. All right, next up, we have something that looks similar to hex or base 16, uh, but this time there are no letters in there. Let's go back to CyberChef, paste it in. We even have a suggestion from decimal. So we can select that and that'll put that in and we can see unpack this BCD. Uh, the last one we've got is super, super long. So we can either scroll all the way. Uh, I think just clicking it will highlight the whole thing. Yeah, almost the whole thing. And this is what I learned by doing this room. It's good to actually check the whole string um, right up until the end. Don't just assume that just because it looks the same up here, that'll be all the same the entire way. Uh, so another way uh, is if we just go into the source and we copy it, double clicking that will actually get us the whole thing. So we can paste that in. And if we spend a little bit of time looking at it, we can see that there is an equal sign at the end and that's our hint. And in fact, CyberChef's already picking that up from base 64. This is base 64, this is what we've already used. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our recipe, which is just a way of layering on different things that are encoded. So we can see that this goes from base 64 to binary. Let's just go from binary and we can see that we have something else. Now this is a little bit tricky. Out of the ones that we've used so far, it doesn't necessarily visually look like anything. Honestly, it looks a little bit more Morse code than anything. But if I had to guess if it's something that we've used, it'll probably be our rotation of 47. So we can see here that that worked and we have another recommendation from CyberShare decimal, which we could already see. And there we go. Let's make this a bit trickier. Nice. So we got it. So that's what encoding and encoding something that's encoded and so on and so forth looks like. Awesome. So that's our translation and shifting done. So let's go to task two, spectrograms. So a spectrogram is a visual representation of the spectrum of frequencies of a signal as it varies with when applied to an audio signal signal, spectrograms are sometimes called sonographs, voice prints, or voice grams. When the data is represented in a 3D plot, they may be called waterfalls. So let's go ahead and download that. And I'm not even going to use a VM for this task because all we actually need is Audacity. If you haven't used Audacity, it's an open source recording software that you can also do a lot of cool things with. So if we look up Audacity and spectrogram, there's actually a view within this program so we can see the spectrogram sound waves. So we've got here to select spectrogram view, click on the track me or the black triangle. In the track control panel opens the track drop down menu where the required view can be selected. So first of all, let's go open our file and following the instructions that we just saw, we can see this little black arrow on the track and we can see spectrogram and there we see it. Super secret message. So let's go on to steganography. Steganography is the practice of concealing a file, message, image or video within another file, message, image or video. So I'm going to boot up the VM for this one. So no need to get on the VPN for this one. We can just click and drag our image over. I'm just gonna put that in here and let's go open our terminal. So it's stegosteg.jpg. So if we run a file against it, it indeed is looking like a JPEG. And if we give that a sneak
sneaky open that's a stegosaurus in some spaghetti bolognese. So there's a few tools that we can use to look at the metadata. So that's the data within data. So there are different tools that we can use for this. The one that we're going to be using is called Steghide. So this is a steganography program. So we run our command, we have a next command, and then we pass through some arguments. So let's quickly find the arguments that we want. So the first one is going to be dash dash extract extract the secret data from the stego file. So that's what we're after. And then next we want to, for our arguments, go dash SF for stego file, and then put the file name in as the argument, which specifies the stego file, the file that contains the embedded data. So let's go ahead and run that. So extract dash SF, and then against our JPEG. So it's asking for a passphrase. Now we weren't provided a passphrase, so we'll just hit enter. And we can see here, wrote extracted data to steganography payload 2248. So if we look at what's in here now, we can see there is that text file. Looks like it is just an ASCII, so we can go ahead and cap that out. And we see here, spaghetti steg. So that's our string. Let's go ahead and copy that back into try hack me. Awesome, that's task three done. So let's go look at our last task, security through obscurity. Security through obscurity is the reliance in security engineering on the secrecy of the design or implementation as the main method of providing security for a system or a component of a system. So let's go ahead and download the tasks files and see what we're working with. So once you've downloaded that, I'm going to copy it over to the VM and we can see here that it's a meme.jpg. Just do it saxophone emoji. Did you just use a saxophone emoji as a Nike icon? Improvise adapt to overcome, but it kind of makes me laugh. Okay, so let's look at this file meme and we've got indeed it is a JPEG. So the only way that I know how to actually see anything inside of, of other files is using the strings, which prints the sequence of printable characters in files. So if there's another way of doing this, I would be super interested to know, but we can just run strings against meme.jpg and that's going to print everything out. Yeah. So it's a case of looking through all the rubbish and see what you can find. But right at the end here, we've got are you found me and hackercat.png. So if we look back at our questions, we've got download and get inside the file. That's what we use strings for. What is the first file name extensions? We can go ahead and give that a copy. And then lastly, we've got get inside the archive and inspect the file carefully find the hidden text. I feel like there might be another way of solving this because I just use strings for both. So I'm not sure if I was supposed to find the PNG and then an archive file and extract it, but it worked. That's what I did. Strings for the wins, I guess. Great. So thanks so much for checking out this capture the flag room, capture the flag, but in late speak. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget if you want my hack notes, see the link in the description. I'm constantly going to be updating that for all of the rooms that I've done plus future rooms. Feel free to do all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate it. On your screen, you can see my last Try Hack Me walkthrough of Ninja Skills, which was a great room to flex your file system searchability and your Linux foo skills. Definitely go give that a watch. I'll see you in the next one and have a nice day.